Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over some key things to know before you visit Vegas. I love Vegas so much. The lights, the food, the entertainment options, what's not to love? But there are some things I think you should consider and know before making a trip to Sin City. Okay, let's get into the list. Most hotels on the Strip and downtown charge a resort fee, which ranges in price usually anywhere from $20 to $50 per day per room. Also, you are taxed on the resort fee as well. Keeping on the topic of money, another charge you need to know is the hotel incidental fee. This varies also in price depending on the property. Incidental fees are basically the hotel's way of ensuring that if you damage anything in the room or take things that aren't meant to be taken, they have money from you to cover that charge. Now it is fully refundable, but you definitely want to know what the hotel is going to charge for this. I could honestly do an entire video on just this topic, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. But for the sake of today's video, just know that each hotel charges a different amount for incidentals. The higher end properties are going to charge more. For instance, when I recently stayed at Aria, the incidental fees there were $200 a night, which meant it was $600 for my three night stay. And again, that was refundable, but it's still a lot of money. Now, another thing to know for this, it really is best if you use a credit card rather than a debit card, simply because of the way the hotel charges it on your card. When using a credit card, it's just a hold on the card, so it's not actually being charged to the card. But if you do, you end up using a debit card, the money is actually drawn from your balance and you will not be able to access those funds. For some lower end properties, this may not be as huge a deal because a lot of lower end properties cap their incidental fees at around $100 or $150 for the entire stay. But if you're staying somewhere upscale like Aria, or Cosmo, the cost for the incidental fees can really put a damper on your vacation if you use a debit card and you weren't expecting those funds to not be available to you. One more thing in regards to budgeting is to make sure you're considering tips when you're looking at your bank card. Tips may not seem like a huge deal when you're trying to decide how much money you can bring for a trip, but Vegas is a service-based city. And especially if you are not from the United States, you may not be used to leaving tips for your servers or bartenders or housekeepers, but these folks work really hard and it's important to leave a tip for anyone who has provided some kind of service for you. The amount you tip is up to you, but just make sure to leave some bills in your budget for this category. The last thing to know in regards to money is the cost to use ATMs on the Strip is absurdly high. Some of the properties charge up to $10 per transaction. If it's feasible, I would recommend bringing cash with you and limit your ATM withdrawals. Or if you have access to a car, you could always go to your bank off the strip to withdraw money if you need to. If you're really in a bind and you have to use the ATM inside the hotel, then maybe withdraw a larger sum of money so that you don't end up having to go back again the next day for more. All right. So the next thing I want to bring up will be useful year-round, but especially during the summer months. Vegas is in a desert, which means that the temperatures in the summer can easily surpass 100 degrees. For people who are like me that already live in the desert and are used to these high numbers, it's not a big issue. But if you live somewhere with milder climates, I want you to be prepared and know what to expect. Make sure to pack a good sunscreen and use it frequently, especially if you're going to be out by the pool all day or out in the sun walking along the street. Also, make sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day to avoid dehydration. This is especially crucial if you're going to be drinking alcohol. Having to make an emergency trip to the ER because you had sunstroke and were dehydrated is definitely not a fun way to spend your Vegas vacation. And since we're on the topic of water, you should know that the cost to purchase bottled water inside the hotels can be insane. I remember I went to buy a bottle of water one time and it was $7 for a single bottle of water. Absolutely crazy. There's a couple of tips for, for you regarding this. First, you could supply your own water. If you're driving in, then I'd stock up and bring it in the car with you. 
If though you're flying in, then Walgreens or CVS or something like that is going to be your best bet. At these stores, you can buy huge jugs of water or packs of bottled water and keep those in your room so you don't have to keep purchasing single bottles every time. Another tip is if you're out gambling, when you order a drink from a cocktail waitress or a bartender, ask for a bottle of water alongside whatever you order. This is something I do every single time and it helps to make sure I'm never without water if I'm having a fun time in the casino. This also works for Starbucks or other coffee shops. Just remember, if you're going to do this in the casino, make sure you tip accordingly. And speaking of Walgreens and CVS, I'll tag on here that the same tip applies if you want to purchase alcohol. Drinks in Vegas are expensive, period. For a cocktail on the strip, you'll likely be looking at around $12 on average per drink, which definitely adds up over the time of your trip. One way to help cut the cost of this is to purchase a bottle of liquor at a place like CVS or Walgreens and then buy some soda or mixers and make your own cocktails in the room before heading out. Sure, the drinks won't look nearly as pretty, but your money will stretch a lot farther this way. Let's talk food for a minute. The sheer number of restaurants available in Vegas are the single reason I love to visit so frequently. You can pretty much find any cuisine you like with a range of price tags. However, you should know if you're looking to go somewhere that's considered a hotspot, you will want to look at booking reservations way in advance if possible. For example, if you want to visit Hell's Kitchen, which is owned by famed chef Gordon Ramsay, then you really want to book your reservation at least a few weeks before your visit. As you can see here, when I went online to try and reserve a table, it shows they are fully committed until August, and I'm currently uh, recording this video in June. Vegas is once again packed with tourists, and after a year of being shut down or being slowed down, people are ready to eat, and it's competitive to get into some of the more popular places. Another thing to know regarding food is that food prices on the Strip are expensive. While there are a few good spots to find a cheap meal, which, shameless plug, I did a video on some great cheap eats options, which I'll leave linked below, most of the time you should expect to spend around $20 minimum for a meal. And depending on the restaurant, that can extend upwards of $75 to $100 per person. So just keep that in mind when you're visiting because I know a lot of people get sticker shock when they go to the restaurants on the strip and see the prices for the first time. Something that was new to me, but I think is increasing in popularity is something that's called as the RRF fee or otherwise known as the restaurant regulation fee. For most of you, like myself, you were probably thinking, what the heck is an RRF fee anyways? And honestly, I don't really have a solid answer for you other than it's a fee the restaurant is charging you because they can. Some of them are playing it off as it's a COVID relief fee. Others are saying that it's a service fee. It's, it varies by restaurant, but in my opinion, it's a really shady practice. And most people probably don't even notice when it comes on their bill. So of course, not all restaurants are doing this, but there are a handful and I would advise you to really look at your bill before paying it. And if you see the RRF fee with an amount next to it, make sure to ask your server what it is and have them explain it. And if you're not okay with it, just ask them to politely remove it. Most of the time they will. Just make sure to not be rude about it. And for God's sake, please don't punish your server by not leaving a tip because it came on your bill. It was not their idea. On to the topic of entertainment. Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world and for good reason. Whether you wanna see headliners like Celine Dion or Bruno Mars, or go and watch crazy acrobatics from the likes of Cirque du Soleil, or maybe just catch a magic show or two, there is literally something for everyone. With that said, unless you're looking for specific seats or it's a show that usually sells out completely, I'd recommend using ticket discount places. You can find some good deals on places like Groupon or Travel Zoo for things like the High Roller or lower profile shows. Or if you're not really sure what you want to see or do, but you know that you don't want to pay full price, why not use one of the Ticks for Tonight booths on the strip? 
here's where you can get discounted rates for various types of entertainment, and who doesn't love to save some money? Speaking of entertainment, you'll find a lot of buskers or entertainers lining the strip out on the street. There can be singers, magicians, and of course the showgirls. I've even seen quite a few people who bring exotic pets for tourists to take photos with. What you want to know is that if you take photos with the showgirls or these exotic pets, they're going to want a tip. Some will word it as such, but others are a bit more aggressive and will say that you owe them a certain amount of money because you took their photo. So if you are planning on taking a photo with one of these entertainers, you wanna make sure to ask ahead of time what they charge. When my sister was with me a couple years ago, she held a huge snake and had her photo taken and it was super cool, but it wasn't until afterwards that the guy told her it would be $20. I thought that charge was absolutely insane, but my sister is a much nicer person and she ended up paying the guy with a smile on her face. So one of my favorite tips is if you're going to be going to the strip around your birthday, you absolutely want to look for what places have freebies and there are quite a few. For instance, MGM properties offer a little bit of free play if you go within a set time of your birth date. I think the last I checked it was a week, but I'll be sure to update you if that's incorrect. Or you can sign up for certain restaurants, mailing lists, they'll give you something like a free appetizer or a dessert. Um, this of course can take a little bit of planning and research, but I do think it's well worth it. Let me know in the comments if this is a video you'd like me to talk about and let you know of the places that I know of that offer something special for birthdays. Let's all move on to the miscellaneous topics. Starting with one of my biggest pet peeves, escalators. The way the city designed the overpasses so that pedestrians don't need to cross the street is absolutely one of my favorite things about walking all over Vegas. But, and this is a huge but, I have never been to Vegas where there weren't at least a few escalators that were turned off or broken. And sure, Maybe it's not the biggest deal in the world, but if you are not able-bodied or you have trouble climbing stairs, it can really become a hassle to find the elevator and hope that it's working or have to climb up the escalator like they're just normal stairs and when it's outside in 110 degree heat, suddenly you look like you just ran a marathon. Next up, you should know that while the hotels may not look like they're that far away from each other, they are. These properties on the Strip are gigantic, so I'd highly recommend using some of the free trams between properties if you can. The one from Aria to Bellagio is one of my favorite ones, because when you're at Aria and you're looking on a map, you might think you can get to Bellagio quickly with no issues. but. Suddenly you're sprinting down the strip in your Le Bouton heels because you're about to miss your dinner reservation that you've had planned for a month, all because Google Maps made you believe you could walk from Aria to Bellagio within 10 minutes with no problem. Don't underestimate how large these hotels are. Speaking of heels, or shoes in general, I'd highly recommend bringing some kind of foot scrub for the end of each day. There's really no getting around the fact that you're going to be walking a lot if you're on the strip. There's just so much to do and see, it's pretty much inevitable. Now, the scrub will be great to use after just a long day of walking, but it's not completely necessary. When it does become necessary is if you're going to be walking around in open-toed shoes. There is a lot of gunk and trash on the streets, and I mean a lot, which is, I guess, fine because, you know, it's Vegas. But after you've been walking for the entire day in your flip-flops and you go back to your room, just take a look at the bottom of your feet before you decide to crawl into bed. One of my favorite changes as of recently is regarding taxis. Now, not too long ago, there was a lot of drama around taxi drivers trying to trick travelers by taking a longer route to get to the hotel so that they'd end up paying more. But that's no longer the case. Now, there are set fees depending on where on the strip you're going. Obviously, since the airport is closer to the south end, the hotels located on the south part of the strip will cost less than those on the north. But, 
It's worth it to know that you no longer need to worry about watching the meter if you don't want to take a Lyft or Uber to your hotel. My last but not least tip is regarding check-in. Now, I know this one probably won't reply to a lot of you, but if you are someone who does not care about what floor you're on or what view you have, I would highly recommend checking in on your phone if you can. The lines for check-in can get crazy long, especially if you're arriving in on a Thursday or a Friday. And for me personally, spending 30 minutes to an hour in line to check in isn't exactly how I wanna kick off my trip. As of today in June, 2021, both Caesars and MGM properties offer mobile check-in. And with MGM properties, if you download their app, you can even use a digital key so you don't even need to wait in line for that. It's absolutely brilliant. This was such a great option for me on my last trip because I just wanted to get my vacation started and checking in this way made it so simple and absolutely stress-free. Okay guys, and that's it for today's video. If you like this video and would like to see more travel tips and tricks, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.